Hey guys, Shane Stars with DroidMotorRace.com and to show you guys the ROM that I've been running for the past couple of days on my Verizon Galaxy Note 2. This is Signage in my 10. So this is just a few days after the unlock. Obviously it'll have to be unlocked, rooted with custom recovery installed. Um, but SB Ryzen is the developer of this ROM. I know I'm saying that wrong. I have to be saying that wrong. SB or Spryson. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. Anyhow, he got to work on this thing and got it knocked out in just a few days. Obviously, it's got some bugs in it. It is an alpha build. It's totally unofficial. They're just pulling from Cyanogen Mods, Garrett, uh, to get this all patched together so it will work. And he is working very hard at getting the uh, bugs all the way out. Um, there are a few bugs that I should mention right off the bat. There's no streaming music over Bluetooth. NFC may or may not work. Uh, orientation sensor is delayed and kicking on that can take a few minutes and then also I noticed that my 4G will drop completely and I'll have to go in and turn airplane mode on and then back off that may or may not happen for you but it did for me and then also now it'll stay and stick for a, a long time but just once or twice a day it'll kick off I have to airplane mode off and then back on now my phone signal never goes away I always have phone signal another thing is the camera if I try to take a picture, it's just going to force close. So the camera and the video camera are not working at all. Uh, GPS may or may not work. Um, I haven't really tested that out myself, so that could be another bug. Another bug, while we're at it, just talking about bugs, uh, if you go to the lock screen, the weather widget, I can't get it to come up. So like I said, it's very buggy, but I've been using it as my daily driver for the past couple of days. I have seen some speed improvements in the day-to-day -day use just because TouchWiz is completely gone. And then I do have the custom the customization features that I have come to love, uh, such as my percentage, and we'll get into that too. Um, first of all, we'll look at the apps that it comes with. If you guys are familiar with Signage in My 10, you know that you get Apollo, you get the DSP Manager, File Manager, and you get Torch which is also fully functional. And then if we head into settings, we do have performance options, but they haven't been fully developed yet. So we do not have we do not have maximum CPU frequency, so we can't overclock here. It's just set at 1.6 gigahertz. We won't be able to do any overclocking yet. That's being worked on as well. And we do have some governors, so you can actually change your governors now. Then if we go up we have some settings here, launcher settings. This is just standard Trey Boucher. Most of you guys are familiar with it. And home screen, we can change our grid size. We can change the amount of home screens that we have. We can remove the uh, constant search bar. We can resize any widgets and also hide the icon label. So you guys know what the Twitter app is. You don't need the label there. You can change that if you need to. And then the lock screen, there's some unique settings here. Uh, you can change your screen security very easily change the way that it functions there and then you have the slider shortcuts so you can actually change what loads up there any application that you want to choose see we'll just go with the gtalk if we save that now we have our gtalk like I said, the weather, I have it enabled, but it's not functioning properly for now. You have your theme manager. So this is any theme from the Play Store that's compatible with Signage in My 10. You'll be able to use it here, and that feature is working. Then we have system modifications. We have status bar. You can choose to have the clock or not have the clock. You can change your battery style. Like so. And then you can also choose to have the notification count. So if I have five emails, it's going to tell me that I have five email, emails. You need to have really good vision to see that, but it's neat that that's included. We have our notification drawer. So when we pull this down, there's some power toggle widgets there. You can choose to have those or not have those. And then you can choose what buttons you want to have. You can see just how many there are. Tons of buttons there. You can also change the button order. And then the power menu, that would be whenever you press and hold the power button, this is your power menu. We can have the reboot and also profile switcher, airplane mode, and sound panel. And then the hardware keys, you can enable customization of the hardware keys. And if you do that, you can change what your menu button does, your long press home button, and also your long press menu key. 
So one other bug that I just thought of, if you turn the phone off and then back on, it shows the home screen, then the lock screen. I don't know if you guys caught that or not, so I'll do that again. It didn't do it there, uh, but normally it'll show, like if I have the Twitter app open, it'll show the Twitter app and then the lock screen, or the GTOG app, then the lock screen. Uh, so that's just another bug that has to be worked out. Overall, the ROM functions pretty well. I did run a quadrant score, and it knocked me down about 500 points on the quadrant score. Uh, but like I said, this thing has to be tweaked and optimized. Right now, it's just an alpha build that does boot on the Galaxy Note 2. Very impressive that SB Risen or Spryson um, was able to get this thing booted up on the Galaxy Note 2 in just the few days that he had. So big shout-outs to him. Uh, you can find this ROM in the link in the description. I'll also do an install guide for this as well, so be on the lookout for that. If you've installed a ROM before, then you already know how to do it. Um, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. As many of you know, Verizon has finally released the over-the-air Jelly Bean build for the Samsung Galaxy S3.